Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus, and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop, and I'm going all the way to heaven, so come on and join me on the road to freedom. Freedom. You've joined us in Monument Valley, Utah. This is my husband, Mylon, my godly anointed, super handsome husband, Come Mylon. On. <laughs> and the reason why we film in all these beautiful locations is because we really want you to taste and see that the Lord is good. You can see His goodness. You can oh, see man. it everywhere you go. And, and that blessed is the man who trusts in Him. And Amen. your life Amen. will be blessed when you choose to trust Him. Amen. And we've started a Fruit of the Spirit series. And we are on part number three. We've covered love. We've covered joy. And today we're covering peace. And if you want to check out the other shows, you can go to mylon.org and catch up with us. Come on, girl, that was awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. Amen. Well, Galatians, you know, we read this at the beginning of the shows because you need to understand why we're doing this. It says then, Galatians 22 and verse 23 and Amplified, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit or the work which His presence within us accomplishes is love, joy, peace. That's where we are today, the peace of God. And it permeates your life. It is not something religious that we just talk about. You hear people preach about and they make nice little signs about and write t-shirts and stuff. No, the peace of God is the real deal, man. Yeah, it is yeah. the difference in being uptight and freaked out and always, you know, uh, a drama queen over something <laughs> or having joy and peace. The peace of God that passes. Understand, understand it. It's yeah. impossible to understand. Right. How you can be peaceful in some horrible situations. That's right, that's Somebody dies and you love them and it means a lot and you're never going to, you're always going to miss them and yet you have peace because you know they're in heaven. You're going to see them again soon. Mm -hmm. Amen. Today we're going to start with Romans 14, verse 17. It says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. We read this last week concerning uh, joy, the joy of the Lord. But the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace. That's where we are today and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now that is a third of the whole kingdom of God. Righteousness, the gift of God in Christ Jesus. Peace, the peace that passes understanding so that you can live like this instead of an emotional roller coaster every day, moved by your feelings instead of moved by faith. You live by your feelings, by sight, by how you feel about situations, or you live by faith. And if you're doing that, then the peace of God keeps you in, at rest, mm -hmm. and the joy of the Lord keeps you strong. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 53 and verse 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgression. Jesus was beat and, and hurt and stabbed with spears. I mean, horrible, horrible, horrible things for our sins, for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. Mm -hmm. The chastisement needed to obtain peace for us was That's upon good. him. Yes. And with his stripes we're healed. If you're going to receive God's healing, you need to receive his peace. Mm -hmm. The only reason God allowed them to do those horrible things to his son Jesus was so that you could have the peace that passes, that's impossible to understand. Yes. Amen. Amen. Psalm 29 and verse 11 says, the Lord gives his people strength. And here's how he does it. 
the Lord blesses them with, with peace. Peace. Oh, that's so peace will strengthen you just like the joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4 and verse 6 says, this is my favorite. Do not fret. Oh, this is your favorite? Yeah, this verse is. Yeah. You want to read it? Well, sure. Come on. Well, it says, Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Don't worry about nothing. Yeah, about Chill. anything. Yes. Hallelujah. But in everything, by prayer and petition, that's your specific request. That's right. You can be detailed with God. Specific request, you make your wants known to God. So you bring it to the Lord in prayer. And when you do that, you're casting your care. Well, it says also to bring it with thanksgiving. Yes. When, when we bring our petitions or our prayers to God, we, we, bring, we it. bring it with thanksgiving and we continue to make our, our wants known to God. Which simply means once you bring that request to God, then you say, thank you, Lord. I believe that you've heard me when I pray. Because when we pray according to the will of God, which is his word, then we know that he's, that he's heard us. That's right. And if we know that he hears us, First John said, then we know we have the request that we ask of him. So when we pray, we pray in faith. That's right. And we offer up thanksgiving giving that he's heard our prayers and he will answer. That's he it. is faithful. That's and it. then the peace of God Verse that seven. passes understanding, that perfect peace, he says, is a guard to our heart and our mind in, in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. And then it says, for the rest, here's how we keep that peace, is verse 8. For the rest then, brethren, whatever is true, whatever, whatever is, is worthy of reverence mm -hmm. and is honorable, and seemingly, seemingly whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely and lovable. That's you. <laughs> Whatever is kind and winsome and gracious. That's you. If there is any virtue, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, then think on these things, fix your minds on them. That's how you keep and maintain perfect peace. That's it. Now listen, this is important for you to understand. This is God saying, I want you to have my peace. And here's the only way to get it. Mm -hmm. If you refuse to think on these good things, you're never going to have the peace of God. If you want to concentrate on, oh uh, he said that she said that they right. said that we said, That's that so wasn't true. fair because we didn't say that and I never meant that. And, and we can go on and on. We can be mad at somebody and what they did to us when we were children mm -hmm. or our first wife or our mother-in-law. We, we can think up, well, our, I didn't like the decision my pastor made, but I'm not the pastor. That's none of my business. My business is to stay in love and not be judging others and yeah, finding so fault with my pastor, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need to do these things that God commanded us to do. Think on these things, brethren, and the peace of God will belong to you. It will permeate your house, your family, your marriage, your health, your finances, your relationship with your, your boss, mm -hmm. your job, et cetera, et cetera. Isaiah 26 and verse 3 I love this and Amplified. Mm -hmm. It says, you will keep in perfect and constant peace mm -hmm. the one whose mind is stayed or is steadfast, which means committed and focused on you, because that person that keeps their mind on God and on Jesus yeah. trusts and takes refuge in you, Lord, and with hope and confident expectation. In other words, God keeps you in peace if you believe he's God, you believe he's honest, and you will allow him to keep his perfect peace on you. Michael and I have been down here filming at the, this little park near our house and, and Christy came down to join us and Christy and I were just having a little prayer time before she started and I just decided if it's okay with you, I want us to pray for you today. If you'll let us just, uh, let me just agree with Christy for you. Father, we come to you, sir, in the holy name of Jesus and we lift up the people that are watching today 
Yes. You know who they are and where they are. You knew them before they were in their mother's womb. Okay. And I know you love them and I know you want to prove it. And mm -hmm. I know how good you are. And I just pray that you'd reveal yourself yes. in all your goodness and all your Thank kindness you. and all your mercy. That you would just extend your peace and joy. I thank you, Father. Your word says that you forgive all of our sins and you heal all of our diseases. Psalm 103, you said you lift us out of the pit of oppression and discouragement. And you put us on a high place. And you crown our heads with love and kindness and tender mercies. And you even fill our mouths with good things like your word and praise and worship. So that our youth is renewed like the eagle. Yes. Lord, do that thank for you. our the people watching today. Set them free from the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. Lord, I ask you to bless them today, their families, their loved ones. Bless their health, their finances. Give them righteousness, peace, and joy in and by your Holy Spirit. And I ask you to help them to understand your word so that when they seek you, they they get you they draw close to you and they are filled with you with your holy presence Amen. i give you glory yes. and honor for it Thank forever you. and ever in jesus name Amen. 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 We're praying for you every day, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. We're believing God Amen. with you for His best. And you know, you couples out there, there's power in agreement. Yeah. Where one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand. Come on. And just like you saw mine and I just touch and agree concerning the Word of God and speak it over your lives, you can do the same for you and for your family, for your children before they go to school. So I encourage you husbands and wives to get together in agreement or or single parents get in agreement with your children and speak the word of God and his promises over Amen. your day and it'll be a good day yes, we will. love you God bless you if you've been following my ministry for very long then you already know Michael Howell and his wife Sherry They've been partners with us in ministry for so many years. We've made records together, probably 20, 25 years. Yeah. Uh, Rob, our, our sound guy here, uh, Matthew and Mary, there, there's so many guys that you would know. But I asked Michael to step in here for a second because not only do we work together making music or making, we made a five year devotional um, church on the run together. We've done all kind of stuff all over the world together. But I asked Michael to come in and join me because I partner with his ministry because they do things that I can't do. And he partners with my ministry. He sows his finances in our ministry and helps us to do what we're anointed to do and vice versa. You want to share something, Michael, sure. about how well, that works? For me, it's, it's just the reality that we need each other in the body of Christ. You know, one ministry or one minister or one person is anointed to do it all. We all have our place and our gifting and our part to do in the kingdom. And so when I sow into you, there's an anointing that's on your life that I partake of. And when you yes. sow into me, vice versa. Exactly. Um, and we also reap the financial benefit. And so, exactly. Um, in short, we need each other. We and, need each uh, other and we need you. We need your help just like you need ours. If you want to help us to take a whole bunch of people to heaven when we go, then all you got to do is go to mylon.org, M-Y-L-O-N.org, click on Team Mylon, fill that out, become our partner, and we will believe God with you for supernatural increase in your life. God said it, we believe it, and we expect it, and we'll be praying for you, you'll be praying for us, and you and me will take a whole bunch of people to heaven with us when we go, and God will bless you for it. In Colossians 3 and verse 15, it says, Let the peace of Christ rule your hearts. In other words, it's your choice. Mm -hmm. God is not going to make you right. receive his peace. He's not right. going to force peace into your life. When he tells me to do something, if I say, God, I don't like the way you're being God. 
You told me to forgive this guy, but I'm really mad at this guy, and he's hurt my feelings, and I, people tell me all the time, I tried to forgive so-and-so, and I can't. That's not true. What they're really saying is, I'm mad, and I ain't gonna. <laughs> I refuse to forgive them, yeah. and I'm disobeying God, and I don't care, because I'm mad. Mm -hmm. Man, that's crazy. If you want God's best, this is real simple, yeah. and this is excellent, good gift of God, the peace of God. He said, let the peace from Christ rule in your heart. Choose to do that, in other words. Or act as an umpire, that's what rule means, continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all mm -hmm. questions that arise in your mind. Yeah. We all got a lot of questions. Yeah. Well, what about sister so-and-so? She prayed and she didn't get healed. Hey, I'm not God, and I don't need to be judging them anything but holy and good and faithful. Yeah. I don't know what was going on in sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so's life mm -hmm. or uncle whatever. Yeah. You know, I don't know if they forgave everybody. I don't know if they really, really believed God or if they just were religious. That Only they know in their heart what they believed and what they did about it and what they said and, mm -hmm. and their relationship with God. My job is to stay focused on my relationship mm -hmm. with God. It says, let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in our mind. In that peaceful state yeah. to which as members of Christ's one body you were called to live and be thankful, giving praise to God always. Be thankful. I'm going to say it again. Be thankful. If you want to stay in peace, here's the key. I'm either griping and fussing about something or I'm th unthankful, in other words. Mm -hmm. I've got two choices. Just like I can be a giver or a taker, I can be a believer or an unbeliever, I can be a forgiver or an unforgiver. Mm -hmm. This is a choice. Be thankful or unthankful. I remember I was watching a brother, Keith Moore, teach on Thanksgiving one day. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, you're either thankful all the time or you're unthankful. And I remember thinking, oh, Father, you've been so good to me. You're so holy and merciful and kind. You love me, Father, and you have proven over and over and over again mm -hmm how much you love me. Yeah, that's so good. You do not deserve, he does not deserve it for me to be griping and fussing about how hard it is and how unfair it is. Man, I need to be thankful. Be thankful. Amen. I have eyes to see this camera and ears to hear and, and, and God has given me this opportunity. What a, a privilege it is to come into your home and into your life and, yes. and be able to minister to you. And, and, and some of you are even partners and you join Team Milan and you're actually helping us to, to minister the love of God and the goodness of God to the, to the rest of the world. I should be thankful. I have this magnificent holy woman and she's his daughter, but I get to call her my wife. <laughs> I mean, I'm blessed. Let's think on these good things. There's bad stuff we could think about. Well, let's concentrate and think on these good things. All good things come from God. Well, and the reason why, too, that peace is so important is because this verse says that we're led by peace. Yes. We're to let peace be an umpire, deciding with finality every question that arises. So, Mylon and I, the first thing we do when we have a decision, when we have a choice we need to make, we ask ourselves, mm. where do you have peace? Where's the peace? Yeah. Because we're led by the peace of God. That's, right. That's why this is so essential That's to right. our lives. That's Amen. Right. This goes right along with that, baby, this next verse. Yes. Romans 15 and verse 13 says, May the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace mm -hmm. in believing, in believing. Okay. that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing mm -hmm. or bubbling over with hope. <laughs> now listen, man, this is good. <laughs> this is, I'm telling you, God wants to do this for you, dude. This is awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> May the God of your hope so fill you with joy. That means you can enjoy your marriage, enjoy your kids, enjoy your boat or whatever you like to go bass fishing or whatever, go hunting. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. your wife, enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. May the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing. believing. 
Man, that's where faith is so important to believe God that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you just basically abound in an overflowing, yeah. bubbling over. Yeah, bubbling over. With that's hope. Good. What's tomorrow going to bring? Expectation. I don't know about yeah. you, but I have this holy expectation. Mm -hmm. I have this magnificent hope. It's getting better every day. Amen. First Peter 3, we're, we're wrapping it up now. Mm -hmm. Get ready for the big ending. <laughs> First Peter 3 and 11 says, Let him turn away from wickedness. Who? The man who wants the peace of God. Let him turn away from wickedness and shun it and let him do right. Let him search for peace and seek it eagerly. Do not merely desire peaceful relationships with God and with your fellow man and with yourself, but pursue and go after, go them. after them. Now listen yeah, to me, please. Good. You gotta go for it. You gotta make up your mind today I'm going for it. I'm going to have the peace of God. I'm not quitting. Devil, you're not stealing my peace anymore. You're not stealing my joy. I will fight you for the fruit of the Spirit. And when I catch myself not submitting to the Holy Spirit so he can produce this, I actually say out loud, Mylon, you're not getting away with this. Be still and know that he is God. And he's taking care of things. He will take care of this situation. I'm going to keep my mind on him. Go for it. You can get and keep the peace of God. That's right. And you know, there was a time in my life where, you know, I did not value peace. I thought peace, uh, what's the big deal? So what if I freak out every now and then? I'm still on my way to heaven. <laughs> and, but it started to cause problems in our marriage and in the ministry uh, for me to freak out continually. And what I mean by freaking out is that emotional roller coaster you know, just living life like this instead of consistent in peace yeah. until I saw the truth in the Word. And in 2 Peter 3, 14, it says, So beloved, since you are expecting these things, be eager to be found by Him when Jesus returns without spot or blemish and at peace. When Jesus returns, He wants to find you at peace in serene confidence, free from fear and agitating passions and moral conflicts. Also, not only does Jesus want to find you at peace when He returns, but when we discussed Colossians 3 earlier, it says you're also called to live in peace. Yeah. Live means 24-7. That's right. It's part of our calling as Christians. So when I saw the truth in God's Word, I began to value peace and I decided, okay, I am fed up with freaking out. <laughs> and then I had to exercise the fruit of peace. You know, you may be wondering, how do I get from here to there? Well, just like when you exercise your muscles, they get stronger. As you exercise the fruit of peace, it will get uh, stronger. It'll get greater in your life, which means Mylon's been discussing with you when that stressful situation comes about, then you simply say, no, I refuse to be anxious about anything. That's right. I be still my soul. In the world, there's somebody will say, you know, take a breath. Right. Come relax. on now. Chill out. <laughs> relax. relax. I mean, there's times, I mean, I, you know, there's this, there's this show on TV about a sniper. And I always oh, thought it was yeah. really cool. It's about a real guy. Mm -hmm. and, and they talk about That's the good. guys who are really good at mm -hmm. hitting the mark. Right. They, don't just, they don't just jerk the trigger. They breathe, mm -hmm. they relax, and they mm -hmm. focus, so good. and they gently squeeze. They never know when it's going off. They never know until the shot is released, yeah. the guys that are accurate. Yes. because they have to stay calm. And I mean, there can be, sometimes while they're taking that shot, they're being shot at. Mm, right. I mean, there is chaos Under all pressure. around them. There are bombs yeah. going off. That's there right. are planes, go there's no telling what's going on. And, and you talk about adrenaline flowing, but in order for them to be accurate, they keep Just themselves stay. at peace. Yeah, so now, good. we believe that you are more peaceful today than you've ever been in your life. And if you'll let us, we're gonna pray the peace of God over you right now, because we believe that he answers prayer mm -hmm. and we believe he's gonna answer this one for you. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for all the precious people who are watching today, who allowed us to come into their home, into their lives and share this, your word, by your spirit 
on the peace of God that passes understanding. Lord, I ask you to fill their homes with your peace, fill their lives with your peace. Yes. And I thank you for loving them and proving it to them again today. Amen. I ask you to bless them and strengthen them and heal them and make them whole and prosper them in the holy and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us again today for the joy of sharing Jesus with you. Yes. We love you and we'll be praying for you. Please pray for us. And tell all your friends to Amen. join us here again next week. And in the meantime, don't forget to stay on, on the road, road to freedom. What better place could there be for somebody to get born again than in front of this magnificent view of God's love in creation. So if you've never been born again, I just want to pray a simple prayer with you. I, the night that I got saved, I was at a concert by a band called the Second Chapter of Acts. And the guy stepped out on the stage in the concert, Buck Hearing was his name. And he just simply said, you know, some of you guys have prayed, you know there's a God, you've asked him for help, you believe even that Jesus is his son, and yet you've never allowed him to change your life because you give him your problems, but you've never given him your life. And I knew that was me. I knew God was talking to me. And so that night, I just simply asked Him to forgive me. And that's all you need to do. You need to take responsibility for any sins. They're just mistakes. Before I found out who God is and how much He loved me, I made a lot of mistakes. I sinned and came short of His glory. But if you want to receive Jesus, just pray this simple prayer with it. Right where you are, your whole world is about to change. I promise you. Say this, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I receive your Son as my Lord and Savior and Master and King. Lord, I take responsibility for my mistakes, for my sins, and I repent. I ask you to forgive me, sir, and I thank you for doing it, God. I just plead the blood of Jesus over my mind, my my body, my life, my family, my finances, my health. And I ask you to teach me your way and help me to rise up in the things of the Spirit. Strengthen me, Lord. And thank you for hearing me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, all you got to do is go tell anybody that Jesus is your Lord, you believed on Him, and you confessed Him with your lips, you are now born again, a new creature in Christ. We'll be praying for you guys every day. I don't know your name, but I don't need to because God does. I promise you I'll keep my faith active in your life. You get in touch with us at mylon.org if there's anything we can do to help you get to heaven, and not just get to heaven, but enjoy the trip. God bless you, man.